Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Aircraft carriers have the most active flight and hangar decks of any other ship. Keeping 90 aircraft organized, coordinated, and ready for action takes a massive effort from everyone on the aircraft decks, but especially from the air boss. A U.S. aircraft carrier's flight deck is like a well-tuned symphony. Every day, approximately 5,000 crew members work together to launch or recover up to 220 aircraft, with a maneuver occurring every 37 seconds. Their color-coded outfits allow for exact assignment identification, ranging from ordnance handling, red, to aircraft direction, yellow assuring safety and efficiency in the high-octane atmosphere of seaborne aviation operations. U.S. Navy aircraft carriers are commanded by a captain, but the aircraft are the responsibility of the flight officer, also known as the air boss. At land-based air bases, the air boss would oversee the air traffic control, ATC tower. Aboard carriers, his job is not much different. He just has less space to work with, so it must be much better coordinated. The air boss's tower is called the primary flight control, PryFly and is on the highest deck of the island. So I have the air department, uh, approximately uh, 600 personnel on board that uh, range in responsibility from aviation fuels to aircraft handling, to aircraft directing, to the arresting gear and uh, catapults. From the pry fly, the air boss and all the sailors with him must keep track of all the aircraft, how much fuel they have, what ordnance they're carrying, where they are in relation to the aircraft, and many other variables. PryFly holds the Ouija board, which is effectively a scaled physical replica of the flight deck. On this board, Miniature representations of each aircraft on board are moved to reflect their real-time positions on the deck. This contributes to the maintenance of situational awareness, control, and administration of all aircraft operations. The Ouija board operators, nicknamed handlers by sailors, work closely with the Integrated Catapult Control System, ICCS, or Bubble. The handlers and the Bubble's symbiotic relationship allow seamless coordination, quick decision-making, and efficient execution of aircraft operations, whether launching, landing, or on-deck movements. But landing and launching aircraft is not just about controlling aircraft. The ship's course and headwind also play a role. An aircraft carrier's engine room, or propulsion plant, is constantly active, enabling efficient aircraft launches and landings. Nuclear-powered engines use conventional steam turbines to power huge propellers generating the power required for the carrier to maintain the required speed 
and heading. The ship turns into the wind for aircraft takeoffs, increasing the relative wind speed over the deck. This greater wind over the wings, combined with the carrier's speed, increases lift, lowering the length of the runway required for aircraft launches. The ability for the engine room to control the carrier's speed is critical in this. Similarly, the carrier's consistent speed allows aircraft to land safely at a constant speed relative to the ship. The engine room collaborates closely with the flight deck and air officers to maintain stringent speed parameters for safe and successful operations. Aircraft carriers use a specialized platform known as a bubble, catapult control station, or integrated catapult control system, ICCS. This critical nerve center supervises the steam-powered or electromagnetically powered catapults that push aircraft off the carrier's deck. Converting a paltry 300-foot deck into a viable runway. The bubble's crew, often deck officers with great expertise and training, manages and verifies each aircraft's weight and required speed for launch to guarantee a safe and successful catapult launch. Within the bubble, integrated touch control screens and digital displays provide a detailed picture of ongoing procedures. As a result, the bubble is critical to the carrier's seamless and thorough orchestration of complex flight operations. A well-choreographed ballet of technology and human expertise emerges during an aircraft launch. The launch cycle begins with the aircraft being hauled into position on the catapult by the flight deck crew wearing green jerseys. The weight and type of the aircraft are then communicated to the bubble allowing the crew inside to determine the exact steam pressure for steam catapults or power setting for electromagnetic catapults required for a successful launch. The catapult officer inside the bubble, known as Shooter, signals the pilot to increase the aircraft's throttle to full power after checking the aircraft's exact placement and deck clearance. Following a final safety check, the shooter depresses the fire button while watching both the aircraft and specialized control screens within the bubble. This move activates the catapult, pushing the aircraft off the deck and into the sky in a matter of seconds. The bubble's launch evolution concludes with the successful launch of the aircraft, signaling the beginning of a new cycle. The Ouija board stays at the forefront of all interactions, with handlers constantly updating it to reflect current deck situations. Communications are often carried out using secure radio channels and hand signals, resulting in a complex information loop that ensures seamless, safe, and efficient flight deck operations. For the bubble to operate effectively, the catapult officer, shooter, coordinates all activities required for launch on the ship's deck. Fly two, super, 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 super.
an aircraft handling officer, AHO, also known as a deck handler, choreographs the complicated ballet of aircraft movements on the crowded flight and hangar decks of a ship. A typical scenario begins with the requirement to prepare an aircraft on the flight deck for a mission. The AHO plans and works based on direction from the PryFly, who coordinates what they know on the Ouija board. Once the aircraft must land, another crew member takes responsibility. Landing signal officers, LSOs, are critical players in carrier flight operations. They are responsible for assuring every aircraft's safe recovery within the final seconds before arrival on the deck of an aircraft carrier. Armed with extensive knowledge of each aircraft's performance capabilities, they direct the pilot using a unique light system. The Fresnel Lens Optical Landing System and verbal instructions over the radio. LSOs must not only comprehend the equipment, but also read the pilot, identifying stress or tiredness symptoms that could risk a safe landing. Furthermore, LSOs rate each approach and landing for training and documentation purposes. They examine every detail, including the pilot's altitude, speed, rate of descent, and alignment, as well as the landing itself. While there are four decks to take off from, there is only one deck to land on. Therefore, they can cause a bottleneck if they don't act with precision and speed. U.S. Navy aircraft carriers are, simply put, air bases at sea, but with almost no space. Due to the lack of space for landing and takeoff, the flight decks, hangar decks, and other parts of the ship, like the engine room, must work together harmoniously. From the air boss to the sailors in the engine room, Everybody does what is expected of them, ensuring a well-oiled military machine called an aircraft carrier. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.